Hey everyone, it's Michelle. In today's video, I'm reviewing for you all La Roche-Posay's new Cicaplast Balm B5+. Plus. This is the barrier repair cream I talked about in my Slovember video, and you also saw me use this in my nighttime skincare routine. I purchased this around the beginning of November, and I've been using it almost daily since. This product is by no means new to me. I actually purchased the original La Roche-Posay Cicaplast Balm B5 three times. I relied on it for treating my scarring after my laparoscopic appendectomy, so appendix removal. I've also used this as my go-to barrier repair cream after CO2 Fraxel laser. I've also demonstrated that in my recovery vlog video. And in general, I like relying on it when I have some acne on my face, as you saw in my nighttime skincare routine. Once I finished my third tube, I did not repurchase a fourth one, and there are a few reasons. One, as some of you may know with the original formula, it is quite casty. It's not something you can really use during the day. There were also times I felt it was a smidge too greasy and I never found it really set. And the third reason is when push came to shove, I could not 100% rely on this as a very soothing product and when my barrier was incredibly impaired. Even when I was using this for my post CO2 Fraxel laser care, I did find it was stinging my face quite a bit. It was rather uncomfortable as you can imagine because my skin was so raw and that's when I opted for the Bioderma Cico Bio Pomade at the recommendation of one of my Instagram followers. So if you're watching, thank you again for recommending this. This is my second tube of the Cico Bio Pomade and what I essentially love about it is that it is soothing. It has a little bit more thickness than the original La Roche-Posay Cicaplast Balm B5 and when push comes to shove, post CO2 Fraxel laser, I really mess up with my skincare routine. I feel like I can rely on this as a very good all-rounder soothing product that does not sting my skin. But when I saw that there was a reformulation with La Roche-Posay Cicaplast Balm and it's now B5+, plus, not B5, which is the original, I could not help but be intrigued and my memory prompted that I originally purchased this to use for acne. So I just wanted to see how the new formula was different compared to the old one. Let's get on to this review, starting off with general information. This is from the La Roche-Posay UK website. Ultra repairing soothing balm clinically proven to immediately soothe uncomfortable, damaged or irritated skin and to provide the optimal conditions for faster and better repair from day one. The new and improved La Roche-Posay balm formula helps accelerate the natural skin recovery process whilst respecting the skin skin microbiome and reducing feelings of discomfort. The balm texture acts as a barrier cream, leaving an invisible protective layer on the skin, also making it ideal as an everyday nappy change balm. I have the 100 ml size here. It retails for 15 euros and 95 cents. And as you can see, the packaging is the same as the original an opaque white tube with a click off cap. Let's move on to the ingredients and what makes the new formula different from the original. It still has the 5% panthenol, which is a humectant. It's also soothing and wound healing. It also contains the Centella asiatica constituent maticasicide. It's an antioxidant, also soothing and wound healing, but the additional star ingredient that's advertised on the packaging here is called Tribioma. This is a unique prebiotic complex. This complex is derived from sugars, plant extracts, and ferments. Tribioma is supposed to help restore the skin's microbiome, in turn helping strengthen weakened skin. Zinc gluconate and manganese gluconate are also still in this formula. They are the anti-acne ingredients. Alongside those star ingredients, there are other notable ones in the formula, the first being La Roche-Posay's thermal spring water. It's supposed to be filled with minerals having soothing and antioxidant properties. I've never tried their mineral water. I have the Aven one 
That's what I like to use to soothe my skin when my barrier is really impaired, but I would not be surprised if they performed similarly. Centella asiatica is also in the ingredients list. It's an antioxidant, a humectant, and also has soothing properties. There's mannose and glycerin for humectants. Mannose is a sugar-derived molecule, glycerin a skin-identical ingredient. There's also dimethicone and shea butter to make the formula more emollient. Alpha-glucan oligosaccharide is also a notable ingredient in this formula. It is a sugar molecule that protects and stimulates beneficial microbial skin flora. There are also a couple of ferments I see in the ingredients list. Vitriocilla ferment. All I could find on that ingredient is that it's skin conditioning, so it helps to soften the skin. And I recognize this ingredient, lactobacillus, but it's not saying whether it's a, a ferment a lysate, a filtrate, it's just saying lactobacillus. So I think it performs the same way as the previous ingredient I mentioned, which is just to condition the skin. And of course, good old tocopherol, vitamin E, which is an antioxidant. Based on the ingredients list, it definitely gives us a good idea of what this product is about. It's an emollient cream with antioxidant, soothing, wound healing, and anti-acne benefits. Sprinkle some microbiome support ingredients on top. We got ourselves a really nice barrier repair cream. Compared to the old ingredients list, what I recall, there are definitely plant extracts in here that I don't think there were in the original formula as well as the fermented ingredients and sugar molecules. So I highly suspect that it's those ingredients that make up Tribioma. Moving on to the texture of the new La Roche-Posay Cicaplast Balm B5 Plus. As you can imagine, it's pretty similar to the original. It's an opaque white cream, a mid-weight consistency, I would say. And I notice as I massage this product on my skin, there's like a shimmering effect coming from it. Silica and titanium dioxide are in the formula, so I feel like that shimmering effect is from those two ingredients. With a thin layer, as you can see on my hand, I find it's quicker at setting on the skin than the original. The original, I did find it was a little bit greasier, I guess, and it kind of just stayed on the skin. But that effect is the same if you were to apply this new Cicaplast Balm on your face. If you saw me apply it as a spot treatment, it just stayed as like this kind of wet, slightly greasy type of cream that never really sets. But if you were to apply a thin layer, I do find it sets pretty quickly on the skin. For application, there are three ways I like to use the La Roche-Posay Cicaplast Balm B5+. Plus. The first way is as a spot treatment on any active acne on my face. I demonstrated this in my nighttime skincare routine. Also note at nighttime, when I do use this as a spot treatment, I am using my prescription Retin-A Micro at 0.1% tretinoin. That is my main active to use for acne control. It helps to prevent acne, but it also helps tackle inflammation on current active acne. So keep that in mind when I go over my experience and the before and afters with the La Roche-Posay Cicaplast Balm B5+. The second way I use this is to mix it in with my moisturizer. That way I get a little bit of barrier repair support and the cast isn't so obvious, especially when mixed in with the moisturizer. But I do find that when I do that mix, the wet-like finish appears on my skin and it does take a little bit of time for my moisturizer to set. And last but not least, the third way I like to use this balm is an all-over face treatment. For those of you wondering if this can be used as a moisturizer, yes, but for my drier skin type, it's not enough. Hence why I like to mix it in with my go-to moisturizer. If I do an all-over face treatment or a really generous spot treatment, it's mostly done at night because again, it's quite wet and the cast of this is very obvious. I have tried this as an all-over treatment during the day, a very light amount and it is passable. And if I were to wear a high neck shirt like this one here, it's not as obvious, especially there's no significant contrast between my face and the rest of my body. Having said that, let's move on to my experience. What have I noticed so far that the La Roche-Posay Cicaplast Balm B5 Plus has done for my skin 
and in such a short period of time that I'm reviewing it almost two weeks after daily use. Remember in my Slovember video, I said I had an allergic reaction on my face and I needed to go in with a barrier repair cream. This was the one that I used. Although in the before and afters, my face does look slightly casty, I assure you it's not the cast that is covering up the redness because I still had quite a bit of redness peaking through that cast as my skin was trying to calm down. I took that after photo a few hours later when I did notice my skin's coloring was fairly normal. When I had that allergic reaction, I also had tiny bumps all over my face and I found the balm did a really good job at reducing them and just eliminating them completely. So it helped with those tiny bumps, it reduced redness. Also on immediate application, it soothed my skin and any itchiness I had subsided. I also mentioned in my Slovember video how I experienced a really bad flush to my face after eating spicy foods and just having a bad reaction from the second cup of coffee I drank that day. Similar to the allergic reaction I had prior, my face turned really red. It felt very hot and uncomfortable. So I again went in with the La Roche-Posay Cicaplast Balm B5 Plus and it helped to cool down my skin and get it back to a normal skin color. So in the past two weeks, this has helped with an allergic reaction I had on my face bad skin flushing, and the third thing it helped with was with cystic acne. And this is the main reason I picked up La Roche-Posay Cicaplast Balm in the first place back in 2017, 2018. Wow, that was so long ago. But yes, that was the primary reason I first purchased the La Roche-Posay Cicaplast Balm original. It was to help acne. The sales rep I spoke with at Shoppers Drug Mart, which is a Canadian drugstore chain, told me that he noticed a lot of his customers would come in and say they loved the La Roche-Posay Cica Plus Balm specifically for acne, and that's why I've had it in my skincare collection ever since until recently. Back to the cystic acne issue, you've probably seen in some of my videos as of recent that I keep getting cystic acne spots on my chin. I have been really bad at maintaining my high fat, low carb way of eating. For those of you that don't know, I started eating this way back in 2020 and it made me learn a whole lot about myself, not just for my skin, but my body in general. And maintaining that way of eating has really helped to keep my skin clear. But European summer is extra long and when you're here, you have to eat ice cream, indulge in sugary drinks, just carby foods in general. I could not resist. So that's why I was persistently having cystic acne on my chin for this whole summer. It's not just the summer either. Fall is beautiful here. All four seasons in Europe in general is very enjoyable compared to Toronto, Canada. So that means I've still been indulging here or there on some delicious pizza and what have you. Bread in particular, unfortunately, really affects my skin negatively and it's pretty quick and mean at showing up on my face. Hence why I had a pretty big cyst developing. Now this month, it's a slow skincare month for me because of these crazy reactions that keep happening on my skin. And it was no exception with my acne. So that's why I decided to keep tretinoin in my skincare routine for this month as my only active. But I thought it was a good opportunity to see if this balm performs exactly like I remembered when it comes to acne. So I've been applying big globs on my cystic acne spots every night. I do do it during the day as well if I'm staying at home. And if I am going out, I do just wipe it off. But anyways, I've been very consistent at applying this on my cystic acne spots. If I were to be using a benzoyl peroxide treatment gel, it would only be twice a day max just because it's way more potent. The balm is, of course, a lot more gentle. I took some before and afters of one cystic acne spot on my chin and I was so impressed at how quick this balm was at reducing the size, the inflammation, 
and the redness around this cystic acne spot. I'll post some before and afters on the screen here very quickly, just because I don't want to prolong the up close look at this disgusting cystic spot. As you can see with consistent application of the La Roche-Posay Cicaplast Balm, day and night alongside the tretinoin at night, this cystic acne spot significantly reduced. Not only did it treat the active cystic acne spots really well, as you can see in the before and after, it's doing a very good job at reducing the chances of post acne red marks. Cystic acne and post red acne marks were the bane of my existence before I started this clear skin journey. As you can see in this clip away of my skincare routine from 2018 when I started using vitamin A, I had a lot of pigmentation on my face and it was really dark and red. So I'm really happy to see that the La Roche-Posay Cica Plus Balm B5 Plus really helps to eliminate those chances of prolonged hyperpigmentation on my face. That's it with my experience of La Roche-Posay's new Cicaplast Balm B5 Plus. But before we end this review, I do want to make an ode to the original one. Like I said, I purchased three tubes of that, had it consistently in my skincare collection, and for some reason, I never got around to reviewing it. I'm going to do a review now because I do know that the original formula is still being sold in the North American markets or the markets in general outside of Europe. So the original La Roche-Posay Cicaplast Balm B5, as I've mentioned earlier, was originally purchased with the intention of using it in my skincare routine to help with acne. And just like the new formula, I would put big globs of it on my cystic acne marks, just because it did help to reduce the inflammation very quickly and the size. I don't have any before and afters of my use of the original on cystic acne, but I will share with you another content creator here who uses the original La Roche-Posay Cicaplast Balm for his face. I'll just insert the thumbnail really quickly. I'll leave a link to this video down below. I encourage you to watch his video in full. He explains his clear skin journey, his struggles with acne, the products he's tried, and how the La Roche-Posay Cicaplast Balm really helped his skin. Another way I used the original La Roche-Posay Cicaplast Balm B5 was after my CO2 Fraxel laser sessions as my barrier repair product. I did a skincare routine featuring this in my recovery vlog video. I'll leave a link to that down below so you can check it out. When I consulted with the dermatologist who performed the procedure, what I should do as my post-care skincare routine, I mentioned that I did have the La Roche-Posay Cicaplast Balm and he said that was perfect to use. But it was during this time that I noticed a lot more stinging than usual, of course. And at first I thought it was well, my skin is super raw and delicate right now. So of course, many things would sting my face. But when I used the Event Thermal Water, when I used Vaseline, and then when I tried out the Bioderma Cica Bio Pomade, I realized that there are other really good soothing products on the market that will not sting my face, especially in that time of need. And that was kind of like the final thing that drove me off the path of the La Roche-Posay Cica Plus Balm. I just wanted a go-to Cica product for those times when my skin barrier was super impaired. Obviously, you don't want something stinging your face when your skin is that sensitive. And it was not just during the post-CO2 Fraxel laser procedures that I noticed the stinging. There were other times where my skin barrier was quite impaired. It was very splotchy, red, a bit more textured than usual, kind of similar to the allergic reaction I had where I could not use the original balm because I noticed it stung my skin. But as you noticed with the new formula, I was able to use it in a couple of instances with an allergic reaction and really intense skin flushing. I experienced no stinging or irritation in those instances when using this balm. The CO2 Fraxel laser procedures weren't the only ones where I relied on the original La Roche-Posay Cicaplast Balm B5. I mentioned earlier in this video and in previous videos 
that I had surgery back in 2019. It was a laparoscopic appendectomy. So it was an appendix removal. And with the puncture wounds that I got on my abdomen area, I was primarily using the original La Roche-Posay Cicaplast Bomb B5 to heal those areas. I did have an entire routine around it. I also used Vaseline and the scar away patches during that healing process but La Roche-Posay was still part of that and still helped with it. Fun story, when I had a follow-up appointment with the surgeon who performed the laparoscopic appendectomy, he checked out how it was healing and he asked me what I was using. So I did mention the La Roche-Posay Cicaplast bomb and it was clear to me and to my husband that my scars were looking pretty good or otherwise why would he ask? And he even said that he wanted to know what I was using so he could recommend it to his other patients. Having said that, both my husband and I had huge smiles on our faces because I pretty much got affirmation that I was doing something right with healing my post-surgery scars. And that's it for my review of the original La Roche-Posay Cicaplast Bomb B5. If you still have access to that in your part of the world, I hope this mini review helped you out in some way. Now on to my final thoughts of the new La Roche-Posay Cicaplast Bomb B5 Plus. I'm amazed by it. I'm in love with it all over again. And it has once again become a staple in my skincare collection. Reflecting on my previous usage of the original and how the new one has been performing in my skincare routine the past couple of weeks, this has a clear track record in my skincare routine as a reliable product for barrier repairing and anti-acne abilities. Rave review aside, there is one big con and this could be just a general thing with La Roche-Posay, but when I was writing up the blog post for this new Cicaplast Bomb, I looked across many of their websites to try to find an updated ingredient list to include in my blog post and none of them had it at all. It was always the original ingredient list for the product page of the new formula. So I really wasn't impressed by that considering how international of a brand La Roche-Posay is and how well-renowned they are also how much of a cult classic this product is in general. Customers are online purchasing more than before. You should have an updated product page, especially for a cult classic product like this. That's it for the con. Again, nothing to do with product performance in general. It's more so on La Roche-Posay's part to just make sure everything's up to date on their websites. As mentioned earlier in this video, I stopped purchasing La Roche-Posay Cicaplast Bomb for several reasons. The main one being that when push came to shove, I could not 100% rely on this to soothe my skin without stinging my face. I would say given the new formula, for the most part, I'm happy that I can rely on it for barrier impaired instances such as the allergic reaction I had earlier this month because if I were to use the original formula before, it would definitely have stung my face a little bit. So I'm really happy to know that I don't have that main reservation anymore with this product. I do eventually want to have another CO2 Fraxel laser procedure. So when the time comes, I'll definitely give the new formula a go. But just because the new formula has been doing so well, it doesn't mean I am going to stop using the Bioderma Cica Bio Pomade after this is done. The Bioderma Cica Bio Pomade and the La Roche-Posay Cica Plus Balm B5 Plus while both are Sika products, I find I reach for them for different reasons in my skincare routine. So I've come to realize that I don't want to limit myself when it comes to barrier repairing, soothing products that just support the integrity of my skin. I, again, reach for them for different reasons. So I'm going to continue having both in my skincare routine. As always, I hope you find content like this helpful and informative. If you did, please be sure to give this video a like, subscribe to my channel down below for future videos, leave a comment if you have any questions about either the La Roche-Posay Cicaplast Balm B5 Plus or the Bioderma Cica Bio Pomade, I'd be more than happy to answer them. That is it for this video, see you all soon. Ciao.